What we're going to be looking at here are convertible bonds that are issued at a premium and they're going to be converted into common stock. And we're going to be looking at here the interest expense on these bonds, the amortization of the premium versus the write-off of the premium here when we convert these bonds into common stock. And for example here, Corporation A issued $6 million in bonds here, par value at an 8% interest rate per year, and they're going to be 10-year convertible bonds and they're issued at 102 or 102% of par, issued here on 11X1. And the uh, first point here, the interest is paid semi-annually here on 630 and 1231 each year. And the conversion option on these bonds. So each bondholder that holds a $1,000 bond can convert it into eight shares here of common stock, which has a par value of $100 per share here for the common stock. And they can be converted here after 1231X2 here. And on 11X3 here, 1.2 million of these bonds, uh, dollars of these bonds here were converted into common stock. So our 20% of the bonds here were converted here. The 1.2 million converted divided by the total 6 million outstanding here on this issue. That equals 20% here. So 20% of the bonds converted into common stock. And we're going to be using the straight line method here for in amortizing any premiums or discounts. And in this example, it's going to be a premium. Okay, so let's go and look at how we uh, record these entries here. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to have the bonds issued here on 11X1 at 102% here. And then we're going to be looking at the interest in the amortization expense up to 1231x2 here and then we're going to be looking at the conversion here 20 percent of these bonds converted into common stock here on 11x3 and we're going to be looking and concentrating on this premium on the bonds that's amortized versus the write-off of the bonds when we make this conversion. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is let's just go on and look at our account. So we're going to have set up some bonds payable that we've issued here, and there's going to be a premium on these bonds payable and it's going to be converted into common stock at least 20 percent of these bonds here converted into common stock and then what we're going to be concentrating on here is this interest expense here on our income statement and how what we would record is our interest expense here versus the amortization of the premium of these bonds here um, okay so let's go and first look at how we would issue these bonds so what we would do here at the issue date here uh, well we had six million dollars of bonds here at 102 percent that equates to six million one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a debit cash for six million one hundred twenty thousand then uh, setting up our bonds payable here we'd credit that here for six million dollars here uh, based on the par value at the issue date here and then the difference here between what we received in cash versus the par value of the bonds we'd credit or increase our premium here on bonds payable at the issue date here by $120,000. Okay, so now what we're going to be looking at here is the amortization of this premium here. And we're also going to look at the interest and how we'd record that here as interest expense. Okay, so first let's just look at up to the first year and a half here on these bonds. We would have amortized that or debited that here for $18,000. And that's based on the fact here again, $6 million bonds at a 2% premium. That a total premium here 120,000 so for the first two year or well per year on a per yearly basis divide that into over 10 years here so we're going to get $12,000 per year here amortization here and for a year and a half here that would equate to $18,000 so debit or reduce our premium here uh, for amortizing that first year and a half by $18,000. So the credit entry here goes to interest expense here on our income statement here. And that's the fact that you can see a credit here reduces the interest expense here on our income statement here by $18,000 for this first year and a half here. Okay, so we've taken care of our amortization here for the first year and a half. Just remember here in the case here where we're actually uh, amortizing this premium the premium amount here a reduction in your our debit here to reduce our premium amount here the associated credit goes to interest expense which in fact reduces our interest expense so a debit here would be increasing our interest expense the premium here credit reduces our interest expense so now let's look at our uh, date here 1231x2 well that's really for one our sem that's that semi-annual amortization here of our interest expense that would be a six thousand dollars and that's based on the fact here we can look at it here where you have a hundred twenty thousand 
10 years here, semi-annually, that would be at one half of that amount. That equals the $6,000. So going down to our premium account here, debit it, or reduce that here for $6,000 on 1231X2. Then we go back to our interest expense. We would uh, credit that or reduce our interest expense here by $6,000, 1231X2. Okay, so we've taken care of our amortization here, this premium, up through the first year and a half plus six months here for the first two years here. So now comes along our conversion here of these bonds. So this is where it's going to, we're going to be looking at how we uh, reduce our premium here based on the conversion here of these bonds. So let's go up and look at our bonds here on our, on our conversion date here. So uh, in this case, we would have uh, we are converting 20% of the bonds. That would mean that we're for our par value here, that's $1.2 million. We're given that fact here. Credit a debit here, reduce our bonds payable by $1.2 million. And then the associated uh, a premium amount based on that $1.2 million par value amount is going to be $19,200. And again, that's on 11X3 here. And how we got to this number here, $19,200, is the fact that, well, we had that, what we, 2% premium here, total $120,000. And for the first two years here, well, we had that $120,000 here. A dollars and two years here over the 10 year period that's $24,000. So what we're sitting with a balance here at the end of that second year before that conversion is a uh, difference here. 120000 less what we amortized, 24000 here. That was that 18000 here plus the 6000 here. Total amount here, 24000 That gives us a balance here of 96000 here remaining to be amortized here. So what's happening here? 20% of these bonds are going to be converted into common stock. So we take the 20% here of the 96000 here uh, remaining to be amortized. That's going to give us 19000 $200 here. Again, remember that 20%, just looking at that here. 1.2 million divided by 6 million total here gives us that 20%. And these are the bonds that are converted after that, the second year after they're issued here. So here we come up with the debit here reduction in our premium of $19,200. So what, what we're doing with this here, you would think that maybe that would go up here into interest expense here on our, our reduction of our interest expense on income statement. Well, that's not the case here. What we're going to do here is we're actually going to be writing it off. So that's that's the point I want to make here when we when we we're working here with the conversion here of these the bonds here uh, into common stock. So this premium here is going to be written off. So that is the write off due to the bonds being converted here. And it's going to be $19,200 that we calculated here. That's not charged to any interest expense. That's simply taking the associate or whatever our uh, par value of the bonds that are written off. This is the associated amount of the premium of associated with that par value that's going to be written off here actually what it, we're doing is we're going to not we're what we're going to end up with here but a write off is we started with 120,000 here then we the 18,000 plus the 6,000 that went up to uh, reduce our income inc interest expense here in income statement but the 19,000 that's strictly what we call the write off here in 11x3 when the bonds are converted so that would again reduce our premium amount here it doesn't go up to the income statement all it does is reduce the premium here. So our net balance here, premium at the end of the, um, well, at the this at the second year here when we made the conversion here uh, and writing off 19200 we get $76,800 remaining here. So that's eight years remain here on this bond here. And however you divide it up after that here, you it's got to be based on the eight years that are remaining here. So you would, if it's on a semi-annual, well, let's say a yearly basis, divide your eight years into whatever your premium amount is here. And that will give you the yearly basis. And then half of that would be a semi-annual basis. Just so you understand that. The 19200 is going to be going into transferred over here, written off here. And our bonds are going to be transferred into common stock. So how do we make this transfer here? So what we would do here on our common stock account here, well, remember here, this is going to be for our par amount here. They're going to be issued here at $100 par 
per common stock here. So we have eight shares here, under dollars per share par value, times that 1.2 million worth of bonds being converted, divide it by $1,000 here per bond, and that multiply everything out here, and you're going to come up with the par value here of nine, uh, $960,000. So credit your common stock here for $960,000. That's based on the eight shares here, per, uh, eight shares converted per a thousand dollar bond. So now the how what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to determine the amount that goes into additional paid in capital here for common stock. So that's really a balancing entry here and we're going to come up with two hundred and fifty nine thousand two hundred dollars and that's based on the fact here that we written off the bonds here reduced our bonds payable by 1.2 million then we have we have to look at the nineteen thousand two hundred here that's being uh, written off here in our premium account here and then we've already accounted for nine uh, well so that's our debits here now our credit here we already accounted for nine hundred sixty thousand dollars worth of par value of the common stock so the balancing goes into a credit amount here for additional paid in capital of two hundred fifty nine thousand two hundred so if we go down and look at that here well that was just in our calculator we have the 1.2 million here in our uh, payable reduction plus a reduction here in a premium account of 19,200 and then we already allocated the 960,000 here so just the difference here you can see arithmetic wise you're going to come up with 259,000 additional paid in capital and that's really the balancing entry here okay so what we want to take away from all this and before we go about talking or wrapping this up here, let's just go move over to our interest expense here. The other thing we have to be concerned with is the actual interest expense itself here on these uh, payable on the bonds. So remember, we had that six million dollar bonds here, eight um, percent interest here, and uh, well, semi annually, six twelfths of the year here, six months out of twelve, is going to give us semi annual payment here of two hundred forty thousand that we have to pay on interest here. So, just looking at the first year and a half, well, we'd had three of those semi annual payments here for seven hundred twenty thousand dollars, and then. If we go back down here and look at 1231x2 here, we're just taking one of, we're looking at one payment, the semi-annual basis here at the end of the that 12th second year here. That would have been what well, we calculated here, $240,000. So what we want to do is we just want to make the distinction here just to wrap things up here. Okay, so the interest expense itself on the bond, that's a debit here, an increased interest expense. But when we're talking about this premium here, if we amortize the premium here, not the write off, nothing that's written off, it's just what we amortize on a, on a yearly or a semi annual basis here. Yeah, the debit here to our premium, a reduction here in our premium to bonds payable becomes a credit here to our interest expense on our income statement. And ultimately is reducing the interest expense. So whatever interest expense we're having, for in this case say the period here of um, that 1231x2 that last that semi-annual payment here of 240,000 is being reduced by the amortization here that that pr the premium amount here by six thousand dollars so you have a net uh, so you're reducing your interest expense what would be arithmetic be on that here uh, 234,000 after you subtract out the six thousand here amortization and um, Again, just remember the premium amortized here, this credit X is actually reducing your interest expense. Okay, so we just wrap this up real quickly here. Just remember here, when we're making this conversion here on our bonds payable here, Okay, one other thing before we do that here, when we were talking about that interest expense here, uh, just remember here on uh, our income statement, we debit here to interest expense 240000 and then our cash account up here on our balance sheet or our asset would be reduced or credited here for 240000 if I missed that here. And just to wrap it up here, when we're converting over, looking down here at our bonds payable, converting our bonds into common stock here, uh, when, whatever percentage you're reducing your uh, converting over here, you got to reduce your par value, by, par value by that percentage amount here that you're reducing, and then you have to determine the associated premium amount that's associated with that par value. In this case, we have to go and we have to look at what we already amortized over that two-year period, then what were balance that was sitting here. Then we had to take 20% of the balance that was sitting here, that 96,000, 
uh, dollars that was sitting here after two years and that became the in this case nineteen thousand two hundred dollars and that was the write-off of the premium here that's a premium that we're not going to be able to amortize anymore because these bonds were converted into common stock and then remember here that premium here did not go over into our income statement or a reduction in interest expense it just was the write-off here and then the other thing here when you're making the conversion here whatever amount you're converting here you that par amount of your bonds that you're converting plus the associated premium here uh, that the difference here it, versus and then our credit debits here and our uh, what you're removing as you're converting from your bonds into your common stock your debits here then you compare that to the credit here for your par value that you're issuing here on your common stock and then the difference here goes into additional paid in capital here a common stock so you look at your credits here uh, for a par common stock plus the additional here to common stock here credits have to add up to your debits here in your bonds uh, what you're reducing in your bonds payable here and in this case your premium account okay so that takes care of our discussion here when you're converting these bonds into common stock and how we'd handle this interest um, the amortization of the bonds here the interest expense and well the amortization here was there was a reduction of your interest expense and then the interest expense itself how you'd enter that here okay so that takes care of our discussion here on a bo convertible bonds issued at a premium here converted into our common stock and how we'd handle this amortization premium here uh, versus a write-off of the premium